union in its current form working? No. And unless Brexit allows for the smaller nations of the UK to feel their equal partners, it will destroy the UK. Long distinctive in its history and culture, is something changing in Wales. What do we want? What do we want? I love my neighbours, I just don't want them to tell me what colour to paint my house. Despite voting for Brexit alongside England, it seems the process has become a catalyst for change here. Independence is very much on the table. It's a real breakthrough. This hasn't happened in the history of Welsh politics, modern Welsh politics. <laughs> the Welsh Valleys, former industrial heartland, population centre of South Wales. By the Labour Party and the English language are dominant. And nationalists have traditionally found little support. Merthyr Tydfil is one of the largest towns here, and a place where until recently, independence just wasn't really discussed. But this was the town square in September this year, when thousands marched in support of independence. Looking out over that square is the old town hall, which now houses the Red House Community Hub, where we met Leah Williams. She helps out in the cafe. She voted for leave, but now regrets it. And while she's not in favour of independence, she says more people are talking about it. Oh, like especially in Merthyr, there's somewhere we'd never know about it before. We'd never mention an independent Wales, but the last 18 months it has started to pop up a lot. And what kind of things are they saying? A lot of people are just saying Wales is better out of the um, United Kingdom, better in Europe by themselves. We're a strong enough government to do it by ourselves, but it's only about three million people. I don't think it can run by himself. have started as a Twitter hashtag used by nationalists, but being indie curious, open to discussing independence, even if you're not in favour of it, has arguably gone mainstream. Even the current First Minister stands accused. Your statement yesterday that your support for the union was not unconditional, are you now officially indie curious? <laughs> Students we met at Merthyr's Sixth Form College didn't all favour independence. Can I get a show of hands? Who would vote for Welsh independence? That's, uh, oh, that's two. Why is that? We've been under England some now for quite a number of years, and I think that we'd be better off as an independent nation. But they did all have concerns about Wales' position within the union and were broadly in favour of more devolution. So do you think the United Kingdom works? Uh, Yes and no, because I think there's a lot of attention given to Scotland to appease them from leaving. But then it's, it's Wales and Northern Ireland are very neglected and parts of England are. So I think there needs to be more attention given to Wales, Northern Ireland and Northern England. And if that does mean Scotland leaving, it, it does. But I think there needs to be a lot, lot of reform in the UK right now. I don't know, I think definitely more powers for the Assembly, um, but maybe perhaps more dialogue between Parliament and the Welsh Assembly, because I feel like they seem, they seem like quite separate entities at the moment. I don't think the Welsh people see how that works. The referendum on Welsh devolution in 1997 was close. The yes vote, which led to the creation of the Assembly, with its new but limited powers, won by just 6,000 votes. Good morning. And it is a very good morning in Wales. Yeah. And relative ambivalence towards the Welsh government seemed to persist. Do you know what the Assembly does for you or has done for you the last ten years or so? Mm, not really, no. We fought a war to get rid of dictators and we got a bunch of them now up in Cardiff. Independence just wasn't up for discussion. But snap forward to today, and independence, once the preserve of Welsh-speaking nationalists in the north and west... Westminster. This is the heart of power. ..is even up for discussion with the former Labour First Minister. What we have now, parliamentary sovereignty, that's outdated and that's gone. And in order for the UK to, to stay together in the future, there does need to be a pretty serious look at the Constitution. If we don't do something now, that window will close and the debate will become, between, will, will become a debate between the Union and independence and nothing in the middle. Few here think a vote on independence will happen soon or would be winnable, given the economic arguments against remain significant. 
lost. But on the streets of Cardiff... So we're going to split them into three groups. Those who believe real change is already underway... We'll meet back here about half an hour. ...are out leafleting in an attempt to win hearts and minds. I think it's, re it's moving really quickly. This has gone from 7 to 8% um, support and independence to, you know, in the mid-20s now. After a couple of hours, the team headed back for a meeting. You know, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but we don't want to put the anchors on either. We want to progress this. Something really is happening. You know, three independence marches in a year, and up until then, there was nothing in my lifetime. It's a zeitgeist at the moment, and people are riding it. And, you know, the circus in Westminster, I just cannot see... 57 years old, and I've always been told that Wales is too this, it's too poor, it's too that. Even in the Industrial Revolution, when Wales was supposedly at the heart of the Industrial Revolution producing coal, we were too poor then, apparently. Three cheers. Three cheers. Yeah. So, how do you think the union works at the moment? Uh, well, it's not particularly fair, um, which is why I'm not a fan of the union. You know, you've got four countries uh, and you've got a lot of power in some countries and not so much in others, and that's not really a fair a way to live, I don't think. Back at the Assembly, there's a recognition that the disparity in size and influence between the nations means the future of the Union is up for debate. I don't think that if Scotland leaves that what's left is workable. Well, England and Wales doesn't work. You can't have you know, 55 million there and three there and, and, and hope for it to work. And I, I fear that with Scotland going, you see a rise in English nationalism, people saying, we want an independent England. Uh, you know, you in Wales, you're a bunch of subsidy junkies, go off by yourselves and you end up with an independent Wales, whether we like it or not, which is the worst imaginable scenario. Now, the, the, the startling thing is, if I had sat here five years ago and said all this, people would have thought, well, that's preposterous, you know, Cloak Cuckoo Land. But all of a sudden now, uh, it's... Uh, it, it, there is a danger that it might become reality, and I don't think that works for anybody. In a relatively short period of time, there's been a shift here. The prevailing view on independence has moved from not a chance to maybe not now, maybe not tomorrow, but maybe one day. Let's talk about it. And that seems a pretty significant development.